Hey guys, almost two years ago we made a video about the benefits of Wi-Fi 6. At the time, it was still bleeding edge tech and was really expensive. Since then, the market adoption has certainly picked up and support for Wi-Fi 6 is becoming more and more mainstream. Today, we're checking out the latest router from Asus supporting this technology and it is chunky. Let's see what it can do. Also, if you're new to his channel, please consider subscribing. Before we get into the specs, I want to highlight that this is not a budget router. Here in Singapore, it seems to retail for over 700 Singapore dollars, but what you get for it is pretty cool. This is a big router and it is pretty obvious by the box size. Inside we find the usual paperwork with quick start guide and the router itself. The router is a flat wide design and it can be actually wall mounted using the two points underneath. At the back it has two USB ports, one of them being USB 3.2. There are also four gigabit LAN ports, single 2.5 gigabit WAN port, and a single 2.5 gigabit LAN port. Unfortunately, you're not able to convert one of the LAN ports to a WAN port and use two of the 2.5 gigabit ports for your LAN. This would be a cool way to connect your high-end PC and NAS without getting separate switch. Alas, you're stuck with one of each. On the front, there are status LEDs and buttons for WPS as well as controlling the RGB logo on top. Antennas on this router are really large and they connect to the four corners. I feel this is where Asus has missed an opportunity. You can see these antennas have little red panels. This could have been a perfect spot for extra bit of RGB, especially with animations. But unfortunately, it's just a little bit of plastic. Once fully assembled, it certainly looks large and as always pretty futuristic. Personally, I prefer more subtle design, but hey, this is ROG after all. In the box, there's also an Ethernet cable and power supply with different global plugs, so most people will be covered. Let's quickly talk about some of the features it comes with, and since it's a gaming router, it is only fair to start with these. Asus has actually labeled them up as levels. First level is gaming port. It is a physical port on the router which will have its traffic prioritized over others. This is quite useful for plugging in your PC or console. Level 2 is Game Boost, which enables the Adaptive KOS, also known as Quality of Service, to prioritize gaming traffic coming through the router in particular. Level 3 is Game Server Acceleration, which is done by a third party service called Outfox. This service works to improve latency to the game server by choosing the most optimum path. I've used something similar here in Singapore before and did not have any improvement due to the physical distance to all the game servers that I normally play on. Your mileage will vary. Some of the other gaming features include wireless gaming mode, which helps prioritizing up to four phones or tablets, open that for enabling specific port forwarding for games, as well as VPN Fusion. VPN Fusion is actually one of my favorite tools. Another tool I like is multiple guest network setups. These actually have ability to restrict your intranet access. So you could have your secure devices connected to the main network, then create separate network for IRT devices, which would only have internet access, and then create another guest network for your visitors. Personally, I would have liked to have VLAN support for proper network segmentation, but for a prosumer device, which will be used at home, this is good enough. This router also supports ASUS AA mesh technology. So if you have or will purchase another supported router, you could create a mesh network which will work over your wired network or over Wi-Fi, and you can keep adding nodes over time. The less gaming, but general quality of life features include monitoring and security tools such as Traffic Analyzer and AI Protection Pro. There's also AI Cloud, which could utilize the USB ports at the back of the unit to make it into a NAS. But to be honest, if you're spending this amount of money on the router, you should really be looking into getting a proper NAS with redundant drives. Other than that, I feel this is a high-end router that has a whole stack of features at a pretty premium price. I wonder what other features you will see in the coming year or two. Maybe all ports will finally be 2.5 gigabit, thus eliminating the need of a separate switch. I guess we'll have to wait and see. If you want to check out any other items covered in this video, the links are in the description below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.